Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my spoilery gripe on The Mirror Empire by Cameron Hurley. As I said, this video will have spoilers in it, so if you've not read this book, go ahead and check out my spoiler free review, which will link on the screen. So where do I even start with this book, first off? Because there's so many things that I need to say and rant about, which is so disappointing. So first off, I went into the story completely blind. I didn't know anything about it. So when we opened up the story with blood magic, I was like, cool, wasn't expecting that. Like, that was a cool unexpected element. I didn't know anything about the magic system or anything like that. But like I said in my review, I found a lot of it very confusing. All the gistas and all the different terms, like, and the Kai and how they're different in different places and like the Daijin and everything was really confusing for me to keep track of. Like, I'm used to fantasy stories, I'm used to fantasy worlds, I can keep track of magic systems and stuff like that, but there was just so many of the same terms or similar names or whatever that it just was like all over the place, even from the very beginning. And that was just very irritating. And also with like, and I mentioned this in my review, with the genders, I wish that she would have had people use actual pronouns because I could have tracked that way better. I thought it was so confusing that like, she wouldn't say until after, you know, a whole paragraph about a character, they'd be like, oh, they used that in the female aggressive. And you're like, okay, I have to go back and like reread her. Actually, I think that person's a male or like that one's, you know, the gender fluid term or whatever. I'm just like, ugh, like, why do we keep having to do this? Like, just use pronouns in your story, like create pronouns for them. Like, or, and a couple times she did. And it's like, why didn't you do that from the beginning? It was only for like one gender. It was really irritating. So that was just confusing from the get-go. Also, I think the whole sentient plant life was, like, super dropped. Like, okay, so you have the sentient plant life, and you, like, burn it back. But that's it. You know, like, that's not... Okay. Like, yeah, we, we form our buildings out of them, kind of, and, like, there's these sentient plants, but, like, that's it. It's like... I want to know more about these sentient plants. I want to know more about these carnivorous sentient plants, and they're, like, not really a thing. Like, they're not really, like, that much of a concern, but they kind of are but they're not. What? I also expected so much more out of Lilia. Oh my gosh, I already bitched about her in my review, but like, she's so fucking annoying. And I don't get just annoyed at female characters. Like, I give female characters especially so much wiggle room, and I really like especially stubborn and impulsive ones. But this stupid character just keeps making dumb decisions over and over and over again because she made an oath to her mom. And she made an oath when she was a kid and she didn't even know what that oath was. And there's all these people around her who know more than her, who she knows no more than her, and she's like, I'm not going to be taken advantage of, and I'm not going to do this, and I'm not going to do that, and I'm just like, what are you doing? So she runs away at the beginning from the person who knows more than her, which I understand as an assassin. Okay, fine, I'll forgive that. But then she runs away from the woman who basically like helped to raise her, kind of like that aunt character, Kalinda, and then that woman dies, and it's like, well, good for you, Lelia, for being just an idiot. And then she lets Gian fall in a trap, even though she's like, oh, I, like, this is the most at home I felt with somebody. So she abandons Gian, even though Gian knows more than her. She tells her she knows more than her. She tells her she knows stuff. And she's like, I don't care. I'm not going to be used by these people. And then she goes back to Tygen, and then she gets pushed off a cliff. And then Gian saves her. And then Gian, okay, here's the part where I just, like, fully gave up on Lily as a character. So Gian takes her to somebody who's, you know, like, a magista and can make portals and stuff. And she's like, I'm going to sacrifice myself to send you through the portal to where you need to go. So she watches Gian get her throat slit and whatever, and I was starting to really ship it too, so I was really like, ah, but that happens. And then she's like, nah, don't send me where that woman just sacrificed herself for me. Don't send me there. I'm gonna grab your grandchild, who has nothing to do with this, and force you to send me somewhere else because I'm a dumbass, and send me to this place that I know nothing about because my mom, my, my, my mirror mom might be there. Okay, idiot. So she sends her through there, and then she pulls the poor helpless little girl through, and she gets sliced in half. And I'm like, listen, bitch. Like, you are too extra, and you're an idiot, and you do stupid ass shit all the time, and I'm sick of you. So that's when I was like, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Gian just sacrificed herself, and Gian was wonderful and one beautiful and brilliant. And then you just kill this little girl whose body parts are twitching on the ground, and you're like, it's fine. And she even has the nerve later on when she's in that slave camp to say, like, when Mir Gian shows up, who's not Gian, but is Mir Gian, she shows up and she's like, oh, I don't regret anything that I did in that little girl dying because I'm here in the slave camp with Mir Gian. And it's just like, you selfish, selfish person. I 
hate her. Like, she has no repercussions for her actions, so she does all this stuff, and everything's fine, and she gets away with it, and, like, she gets to be with Gian now, even though it's, like, me or Gian, so other Gian sacrificed herself, and it's like, well, I don't fucking care, I'm just gonna be with this girl, because she's, like, basically you, and then all of a sudden she comes into her abilities. Like, how frustrating. So, the whole time I'm waiting for her to be a badass, because from the beginning I wanted her to be Omajista. So I'm waiting for her to be a badass, and then she's just not over and over and over again, even though she her life's in danger when she's falling off that cliff. Everyone, you know, um, Tygen keeps telling her that, like, she's probably beyond teaching at this point, blah, blah, blah. She gets into the, you know, Mirror Empire world, and with the Mirror, and all of a sudden, she just has abilities. She can just, like, do this stuff. No, you need to have some kind of training. Like, n no, I don't care how innate it is. No, you didn't have any foreshadowing to it. It's not like she kind of, like, had some spurts of powers here and there. No! No, no, no. So she gets to, her, you know, her mom's zombie body. Not creepy or anything. And so she gets there, and she's just able to unravel this mirror. She doesn't, she doesn't know how to make mirrors, but she's just magically able to unravel this giant mirror that should be really hard to unravel. And she falls out of the sky, and her mom, in her zombie bodiness, is able to, like, have the, you know, wherewithal to, like, save her with some, like, plant life. It's just stupid. And it's just, like, Dosas Machina, where it's like, we're just gonna have something just magically happen here, and the character's gonna be fine, and have, like, no repercussions for their actions. And then all of a sudden she goes back, and she's like, I'm gonna save the, like, the die, and, like, I'm gonna be a champion for them, and blah, blah. It's like, you haven't cared about anyone but yourself ever. And nothing has happened to make you not care about anyone but yourself. So, like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I hate her. I hate her. And then her and Tygen are all of a sudden, like, friends, like, ooh, I pushed off a cliff once. Yeah, you did, and we're just buddies now. Like, what? 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 That's really frustrating. And then we have Zezeli as a character who I didn't necessarily hate, but I still wasn't very fond of. She's raping her husband. She's ultimately, like, a really bad person. And she also gets away with, like, almost everything. Like, she just does really bad stuff. And it's just, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. It's fine. So we have her, and we have her interactions with people, and she's just not a very likable person, but she's an unlikable character that I think is a good unlikable character because she's supposed to be unlikable, where I honestly feel like we were supposed to like Lilia, and we just don't. So that's a thing. I also like Akio, I wanted to like more as well, but he was just also a very wimpy character, but then all of a sudden he goes from being like, I'm gonna be a pacifist, and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and then he's like, nope, at the end I'm gonna be badass. And it's like, between him and Lilia, where it's just like, you haven't done anything the whole time to, like, hint at that. You haven't had any kind of development in any way, but all of a sudden you're gonna be like this when it's when it's time. It's just like, what? Have good character development that's, like, slow and gradual and normal. This doesn't make sense. You can't just be like, oh, this is where they are now. You gotta believe me. You gotta believe me. It's like, no, no, I don't. I'm probably forgetting characters. I wanted to see more of Zezali's husband. Like, that was a thread that was just dropped. He went through a portal with that one, like, assassin guy, who was, who was he, even? And he went through a portal, and it's like, oh, we're not gonna mention him. Like, I thought at the end he'd get mentioned again, like, oh, we're just not gonna mention him. We're just not gonna mention him. Great. Great. And some of the other ones I don't even care about now. Like, I'm just, uh, there's so many characters, I just, like, there's so many threads. It's like, why? Why? And I understand that it's a trilogy, but, like, I don't know anything that I didn't know at the beginning. What is this? Like, wh what? Like, the narrative just keeps you at arm's length, and it's like, I'm not gonna tell you anything. I'm not gonna tell you anything. You don't need to know anything. I'll tell you later. It's like, tell me now. I just read 500 pages. Tell me now. Tell me something. Like, I, I'm left, like, not hungry for more. I'm just, like, annoyed. You want your readers to be hungry for more and, like, you leave out just enough that they want to know more, but this is where, like, fine. I don't want to fucking know anything. You don't want to tell me anything? I don't care. I don't want to know anything. Like, even with the ending where you know that, like, Nasaka is working with, like, the bad people and that, you know, Akio is for sure her son and we have, like, Zezali getting mauled by the Empress's, like, tigers and that there's a third mirror world that's trying to come in as well. Like, all of that stuff could be really cool, but, like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't, I don't like how all the the sexism is portrayed in here as well. I thought that was really lazy. Like, yes, you have a matriarchal society, but then we're gonna have all the same kind of sexism. Like, the women are just basically like the men that are in our society and treat, like, the men the way that our society at its worst treats women. And it's just like, why? Why? That's lazy. That's lazy. Like, you could have a matriarchal society and have it be, like, different than just flipping the genders and being like, all right, this is how it is now. Isn't this cool and unique? It's like, no. No, it's lazy. I feel like I'm forgetting things, but at this point I'm just kind of sick of talking about it because I talked about it with Adriana as we were reading it and I talked about it in my review a lot and now I'm talking about it again in more like depth, but there's just so many things that I'm like, 
why like even the magic didn't i love elemental magic and even that like didn't make up for it i liked like the omagista magic a lot and that's really cool to make up for it i love tygen's like you know gender fluidity and like biologically changing your sex like just magically because of like their powers that was really cool but like it just doesn't make up for it if it was just like if this book just fell at tygen i'd be like cool like that's the only character i actually care about honestly like that's it and even they do kind of irritating things so it's just like this book makes me tired. I honestly, like I said, that I might read, I might be willing to read more of it if like somebody said that they felt the same way about this book and then liked the second book, but honestly I don't know if I could just try to suffer through it because I'm just so annoyed with so many things about this book. Like it has so much potential and that's why ultimately it got two stars for me because there was so much potential and I liked what it was doing with some elements here and there, but ultimately I'm just irritated. I'm just really irritated with this book. So comment down below and let me know what you thought of the Mirror Empire. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!